Good morning, friends. Very good morning. Bonakam. Uh, I don't know when I was coming for this occasion. I was in a bit of a hurry because I told them that 9 o'clock everybody is waiting. 
and one of the essential things that Mahatma taught us was to respect time. But then you will, you will bear me out if there are phone calls, there are greetings, there are... Uh, because the other day also coincides with this, which I don't know, it's a blessing you can call it or a coincidence or whatever. The main day today is our Mahatma's birthday and uh, another great man whom we probably don't remember is our uh, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri, who everybody knows was a symbol of greatest modesty that we can always think of. As a Prime Minister, when he wanted a car to be bought for his family, it's on record. He took loan from one of the nationalized banks and uh, bought that car, which probably they had kept, I remember uh, DL something, 18, or that was the number given to him, which remained in his house till he died, until the family uh, parted ways from that house. Uh, nevertheless, the, this is a great day for us. We should feel blessed. Somewhere, long time back, I had read in one of the newspapers that we should be grateful to Parsis that they chose India to be their homeland. And ultimately, what they did is a story which all of us know. There are the Tatas, there are Godrej, there are Narsimans, and there are uh, Narsimji, who is the, the Pestanji, the great construction company. So if you look at it, probably the huge chunk of our economy goes to the contribution of Parsis. So this sentence I had, uh, I had read. So I'll extend that to the fact that we should be grateful to Almighty that Mahatma was born in our land. Lal Bhadra Shastri was born here. No, Mahatma was born here, yes, you will say it's a coincidence, but this coincidence is a great lesson given to us. We should learn from what he did. If he could do that, probably if we extend it to our uh, lives, we all can contribute to the growth of our nation. If that is done, probably no would, nobody would ever look back in terms of, uh, I could have contributed, I could not do it because of this. That, that part would never come in. Uh, I was reading an article yesterday. I would urge all of you sincerely to read that article uh, in yesterday's Times of India. One of our college mates, she writes very, she's a prolific writer, she writes, she used to be on the TV also very often, Sagrika Ghosh. She wrote, Mahatma still rocks. This is the title, headline. Mahatma rocks, 10 things that we can take out of his life. So I will urge all of you to read that. It's a great eye-opener. And anyone who has not imbibed some of the great things, great virtues, you will find that after reading that article, you will immediately say that this is something which is so very simple, I can also do it. So I will urge, I don't have much time to, to uh, dwell on that, but I will urge you to read that. In fact, one of our faculty members has also put it in the group, uh, 10 things that we learned from Mahatma, which I really appreciated a great deal. So that also you can read. Now, what is the takeaway? I was in Mauritius uh, till two days back for some academic assignment with a group from the university. And I was delighted when I was traveling from a place to the venue. On the way near in Port, Port View, uh, we had a tram. They call it metro, but we, know, we call that a, a tram. And on the, on the board, it was illuminated Mahatma Gandhi. So I thought it's a train or tram that they have named as Mahatma Gandhi, but that was not. That was the end station of that metro. And luckily, that also reached, we also reached, and the station's name was Mahatma Gandhi. The bus stop's name was Mahatma Gandhi. Now, imagine a place which is so far off from our nation, and uh, there the residents are giving that much respect to this great soul. You go to Fiji, you will find there are a number of cities, number of stations, which has been named after Mahatma Gandhi. Now I'll put a question to all of you. You go to any country in the world, any country including China, you will find something or the other associated with Mahatma Gandhi. Now that is the greatest virtue that this great soul had, and that is what has uh, enabled us to inherit those things. 
uh, in our own lives. What are those things? No, it's not a very difficult uh, thing to understand. There are three simple words, truthfulness, hardworking, dedication. And finally, when we analyzed his life a little more uh, deeply, we found one of the greatest things he said was cleanliness, which 2014 onwards our Prime Minister Modi embarked on that and then we all started looking at it. People say, what is the contribution? Our contribution is we started building toilets and somebody in a sarcastic way from the opposition camp in one of the debating arguments where I was there, he said, well, the government is going to make toilets only now. When I told that if this is not done, you look at the kind of uh, uh, damage that has been done to our health services, people defecating in the open so far. Now that has stopped number of toilets which have been built. It is a step towards cleanliness. We have all uh, taken a pledge that now onwards we will do this. Every year we take a pledge. Yesterday we did this. Now if that is kept in mind, I think Mahatma's virtues will automatically uh, transcend onto all of us. That's what is required. Mahatma's philosophy is not a difficult philosophy. If you just look at uh, a fast flashback, you will find a smart man with a tie and a British style suit was chucked out of the train, thrown on the platform. Now one would have normally taken it as uh, fine one of those things of that time and then we would move on and would have, one would have continued with the practice as a barrister. But that, he took it to his heart. He says, if they could do it, I'm going to change the word. And then he came back. After that, it's a, it's a history. Sabarmati house, where he was staying, and then the kind of uh, uh, steps he took towards our independent movement. Nothing, no force, no army, no manpower. He just said that Satyagraha is something which this philosophy never was there before this. You want to do anything, you want to achieve anything, sit on a dharna, peaceful dharna, hunger strike. All these things Gandhiji started. Previously it was all violent moves to achieve something. Now that is the greatest thing that the whole world has learned and that is where when we achieved independence and when people wrote a lot about it, they said here is a soul which has contributed in the best of the ways to the development of Indian nation, Indian uh, philosophy. Indian unity, Indian um, development, that ultimately has now come to the uh, whole world wherein we have now embarked on Vasudev Kutumbakam. This philosophy which probably was always there, but we never took it that seriously. It was never advertised, never publicized, but now it has come to the forefront, forefront of every nation. And recently it has been amply demonstrated in the G20 concluding day, when we, we could reach Delhi Declaration. Uh, imagine Delhi Declaration being reached in the presence of countries like China, countries like Ukraine, Russia, all had divergent views, but that all came in with the philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi. Everybody kept that in mind. Our foreign policy has grown on his philosophy of non-violence coexistence, peaceful development. So this, if we keep, I think our greatest uh, homage to Mahatma Gandhi would be that if we imbibe his philosophy in our hearts, hearts and we follow his footsteps, which is not difficult. You don't need to spend any money. You don't need to buy any book. Every day you find something or the other out of his life and Newspapers, particularly from 30th, 1st October, 2nd October, October 4th October, every newspaper across the country in every language will have something on Mahatma's philosophy. Read that and I'll particularly urge everybody to read uh, Sagrika Ghosh's article in Times of India yesterday, which is a great eye-opener that Mahatma rocks because of these 10 factors which we need to adopt in our lifestyle. If that is done, I think we'll be We'll be not one of the greatest countries, we'll be the greatest in the world, uh, for which we have the capability, let me tell you. And this is that day that reminds you that here is a great soul which somehow lived on this earth and we, too, we need to 
imbibe that philosophy in our hearts so that we grow from strength to strength and our nation develops in the best of ways. So I pay my very respectful homage to the great Mahatma and uh, I'll urge everybody to follow that so that we remain united, so that we remain strong and we develop in the best of ways in all sectors. We are here from education sector. We are here because we need to strengthen that. And there also, Mahatma had his own thinking in terms of development. If you look at the history, I don't know how many of you have pondered over this. It was he who said, if you have to develop your country in the best of ways, pick up the smallest unit. Pick up the smallest units, that unit was village. So look at the village and villages, if they are developed, country will develop. It was he who gave this. Earlier on, it was developed cities. This was the philosophy. And every country in the world followed that. We only started following this. And uh, we are on a right path because our, uh, our uh, religious philosophy on the guidance of what Mahatma gave is becoming stronger every day. So I will, I will give my heartiest compliments to all of you who have assembled here and would urge all of you to spread this message by word of mouth. We have enough mouth, so we can definitely spread this across the world. And uh, let's pay respectful homage to this great soul, so that uh, the soul keeps on guiding us for all times to come, not only for our nation, for the entire world, which everybody acknowledges. Thank you so very much, and my heartiest congratulations to you for this great work. Thank you.